Robin Cross is with us right now, and he is with Stone X. He's located in Chicago. He's our resident lumber expert that we call on from time to time. And speaking of lumber, Robin, uh, give me an update here, if you would, about what's driving the market prices. We're much higher than we were last time we spoke. Good morning, Marlon. Thank you for having me, bud. You know, uh, we're still kind of a little consolidation phase right now from all the big news that we announced last week on the air. So let's get into the prices. Right now, our March lumber is trading at 510. That's up 60 cents with only 49 trades over there. May lumber has not yet traded today, so uh, that settled at 520. That's where we're at. And I was all set to include the new contract because every day it's been trading. But, of course, the day I want to mention it, March new contract, which is the mini, which is a truck size contract, 601 down 10 with only two trades. But there's... There's definitely been some volume starting to pick up ahead of the delisting of the legacy contract that's scheduled for May 15th, you know, after the expiration. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So like legacy open interest right now, March is sitting at 1,777 cars. May has 437 with a total of 2,214. And if you remember, Marlon, that's off about 1,000 cars. This rally cut out about 1,000 cars of this market. The mini, the truck contract is... March has 311 contracts. May has 550. And the reason I mention that that's significant, this is since the new contract's been open since August 8th. This is the first time open interest is greater in the mini, but that's to be expected uh, for a total of 880 cars over there. Or I should say trucks. So now let's, uh, let's break down the market. Last week, um, if you recall, we had a major producer announced a substantial curtailment. Canfor, which is the second largest producer of lumber in the world, took off to the tune of about 750 million board feet. But if you take that in consideration, it, they weren't the only ones who made announcements. You know, during Christmas and, and the, the beginning of January, you had other mills in there doing the same thing. So I would say from all the totals I came up with, it's more like about a billion board feet of production cuts across the whole market. And just as I predicted on the show last week, you know, I expected a couple days of limit moves from that news. And that's exactly what we had. Both Thursday when we hung up, stayed lock limit and continued to go up, limit up on Friday, eventually making a new high of $533.70. So that was a rally of about $191 from the Jan 15th low, just two weeks ago low, of 342 bucks. Cash also saw a major rally that consisted, I would say, of mainly short covering. Random length print on January 13th came out at 345. Yesterday's random length print came out at 450, so a gain of $105 over there. But I can officially say, Marlon, the exuberance and momentum in both cash and futures has dramatically slowed after the rally. Okay. You know, so far we're down about the prices I gave you this morning are down about 30 bucks off recent highs in just a day and a half. And you, what the folks got to remember, when you have these production cuts, they're not coming till Q2. So in the meantime, the mills are still running, right? So it's going to take some time for this to really be felt because you got to remember the reason we made these announcements to begin with is because the market was in bad shape, right? They had to take the production cuts off. I think that's like the last tool in the toolbox to stop prices from completely in Floating. So, you know, as I said, I don't think you should chase prices in here. I All think right. there's going to be opportunity on both sides of the market, and you just got to be patient and pick your spots, Marlon. I'm, pick I'm your glad spots. You, uh, I'm glad you pointed that out. And, man, again, you were right on the money last week when you were talking about the potential for a big up move. Appreciate that, Robin. Robin Cross of Stone X. He's located in Chicago. I'll come back, and uh, we'll get you updated on Livestock Trade right after this.